How's it going, guys? Welcome to a picture in picture video because I said I was going to try to do one a week, and today was actually the day that I was like, alright, this could honestly kind of work out. I don't know. But I got an RU match against Roland521, and I don't really have much to say about it other than that it was an RU match, and it was. It is one I'm going to narrate right now. I don't. What, what more do you want from me? I just make the videos, so. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and play that back right now. Uh, my Xbox Red Ringed, and this is relevant because I'm trying out a different setup because I was honestly using my Xbox to play the battle video on the TV behind the camera, but I can't really do that anymore, so I actually am using something else, which is kind of cool. Uh, if it kind of looks like I'm looking below the camera, it's because I am. I have a second screen under it. But that's just me rambling about stuff that really doesn't matter. What you're probably looking at right now is a team preview, and in the team preview, we just have uh, freaking Rotom versus Scyther in the lead spot. Got some other stuff, not too worried about it, and it's just typical RU stuff, you know, just a different arrangement of it, different day, different shit, you know how that goes, but as you can go ahead and lead off with Rotom, I am going to go ahead and lead off with Scyther, I am suspecting that this is a Choice Scarf lead Rotom just because it's in the lead spot, you know, going to go for a Volt Switch, I figure the best thing I can do here is go into my special defensive wireless modem, uh, named WPA because I'm kind of punny and I don't really need to be, I am terribly sorry for that, I thought it was funny. Anyways, uh, quad resist the Volt Switch, which is very nice, and I take it like a charm, but it goes into Smeargle right now. If there's anything that I know that Smeargle likes to do, it is, in fact, Spore, which is why I have a Bufalant. Bufalant is fantastic in RU with Sap Sipper because of stuff like Lilligant, Tangrowth, Sceptile, uh, freaking Sporing Smeargle, but he doesn't Spore, he Stealth Rocks, and all of my what? I have no idea why he has a Stealth Rock King Smeargle. There's a lot of Stealth Rockers, although Smeargle technically is one of them, and you could put like three other moves with it. I just really wasn't expecting it from it. I don't know. But Rotom comes in, I can't touch it with anything on this set. I have Mega Horn over Stone Edge because, you know, bulky Psychics likes to like to come in, like Yuxi, and Yuxi just likes a T-Wave, Slowbro likes, not Slowbro, excuse me, Slow King just likes to be bulky and annoying as hell too, uh, that's why I have Mega Horn on it, you know, for that kind of stuff, although you could argue that Stone Edge is better coverage, I just think with the way I build my teams, Mega Horn kind of works out better, except for this case right here, uh, this was a last minute addition to my team, I had five things, and I was like, I'm just gonna put a Choice Scarf Haunter on here, Worked out great, because I had a feeling it was going to trick right there. A Choice Scarf Bufalant without any leftovers is just kind of, I don't know, especially since mine didn't have any speed in it. It would have been absolutely crippled, which is why I went into my Haunter. Uh, I knew I was naturally faster than Rotom, because I was running a positive speed nature, and then I just took him out of the Shadow Ball. So, right there was very good, although I can't help but wonder if he was listening in on my logic in the stream, because I thought I was going to get Pursuited, which is why I decided to stay in and Shadow Ball. Which is why he decided to iron head it, thinking that was the more beneficial move to be locked in overall. I was to an extent, except I brought in my Feraligator because I know Feraligator can take an iron head alright. I'm not going to get flinched by it because I'm fast or anything like that. And I just end up dragging Dancing on the Switch. So Quillfish is going to come in, uh, the plus one, plus one on the Dragon Dance, but after the Intimidate I'm going to be at neutral attack. And that Earthquake still does a pretty good amount, not bad, I really like it and he's just gonna get up layer spikes. So, I can set up in his face all I want, but I know these things sometimes carry haze, so I actually just wanna take it out right now, if possible. So, I don't wanna set up anymore. Uh, the earthquake was a little bit obvious, which is why he goes into a scavalier. I really don't care, as long as I don't have to deal with quillfish right now, slash take it out as soon as possible. That's great. But, right here, I don't honestly know how much this flinch mattered because I don't know what he ended up going for. If he ended up going for a choice band and Megahorn, then, well, shit, I probably couldn't have taken that. Anything else probably could have, and I could have just taken him out with a torrent-boosted waterfall. That would have worked out better. But instead, he gets flinched. It happens. I kind of feel bad for it, but it's like 10% less than Scalds at the same time. It's Pokemon. What do you want me to do? <laughs> um, go for another Earthquake right there. Fails to take him out. I think I was at minus one on that at that point, and you know he just ended up paint splitting. So I know his set is paint split spikes. Uh, I think that's all we know, and I hadn't really seen anything other than that yet. So yeah, <coughs> excuse me. What the hell happened there? He ends up thunder waving. Uh, someone in the stream mentioned that these things do like to run that. I wasn't worried about it though because I do have a Lumberry. But honestly, instead of Dragon Dancing right there, I should have just Earthquaked again. I should have Earthquaked multiple times because the more times he paint splits, the closer he gets to putting me in torrent range. And then just I put more offensive pressure on him so that way, you know, I don't have to end up 
uh, getting paralyzed ultimately like I did right now. So if I had played, I feel like I could have played that a little bit differently. Is what I'm ultimately trying to say. But you know, it was a live stream. I just, I was just doing my thing. I honestly just wasn't worried about it too much. So what do we have next? Uh, Brinson Smeargle to take a earthquake. I think I'm at like neutral or minus one after a dragon dance or something like that. Uh, I mean, he lives. I don't know what more you want from me. He just ends up going for a U-turn right there. So. I could go for a... I think I went for a waterfall right here, because I was like, alright, I'm probably going to be close to Torrent after he decides to hit me with a U-turn, and it's just kind of bulky, and I got paralyzed, so I didn't even hit it with a Torrent-boosted waterfall, and he just takes me out of the drain punch. So, uh, at least I kind of put a dent in some stuff, but Frogator definitely could have done much more than I ended up using with, so Frogator fans, I'm sorry. I will use the Swords Dance set and try to make that up to you from now on, because the Dragon Dance set just isn't really doing it for me. So, my reasoning for going into Sand Slash right here was because I know I'm a physical wall, uh, I know there are Stealth Rocks on the field, and I do have a Scyther, mind you. I actually want that thing to be alive, which is why I need to get the rocks out of here, uh, getting the Stealth Rocks and the Spikes off the field. It's also a good idea, too. Uh, well, for that, and then just in general, know what I'm saying? So, uh, ends up 2 KOing me with Ice Punch over Close Combat just to not get the defense drops. Still a pretty good play, you know, I'm not gonna knock it. Uh, especially because it has the same base card. Like, I mean, why the fuck lower your defenses? Even though it ultimately doesn't matter two turns later, because I just do have a choice mana aerial ace, just gonna smack him right in the face and take him out. So I was like, all right, I am golden. You know, I sacrificed my sand slash because there were no more physical threats on his team at. And then I forgot about Archeops, and then I shot my pants because I realized I had nothing to take in acrobatics. I had to make a decision right there. I was like. Uh, I was trying to play around keeping Scyther alive and use it, and it just dies to a Power Herb Sky attack. Help me, my mind. Sweet baby Jesus, what happened? I really couldn't tell you. But I ended up getting wrecked by this thing, and I was like, um, shit, okay. So I'm assuming his flying stab, his only flying stab, was going to be Sky Attack, just for that one pinch hit. Uh, I don't really mind taking a Stone Edge or a Rock Slide, I guess, because this thing's really bulky. So I was like, alright, I'm just going to go ahead and go for a head charge and see what I can do from there. He switches this thing in both as death fodder and to get the intimidate. It was a fairly good play as well. Uh, I, I'm now at minus one as he brings in this Archeops. And I'm still wondering what this Archeops has for me. I don't remember if this is his last. I think this and his Smeargle are his last one. And it kind of confuses me that he goes for Heat Wave. It confuses me after the fact. During the game, I was like, okay, he doesn't have anything else to hit me with. He's just got Sky Attack and Heat Wave, and he's got some other shit that really isn't going to work out on Buffalon. But uh, he's going for Heat Wave. Uh, now, let me say right now that Heat Wave is not a bad move on Archeops. It hits Fair Seed, it hits Tangrowth. Uh, although Tangrowth would probably be wrecked by an Acrobatics anyway. It hits Fair Seed, is what I'm trying to say, and it hits other Steel types in that tier. So ultimately not too bad if he's got HP Grass for Rhydon slash Rhyperior. Right That's a cool thing too, it's kind of whatever. But he's going for Heat Wave to Fish for the Burn, and the point I'm trying to get to is that he, has ac he had Acrobatics. I don't remember if he just used it or he does end up using it later, but he could have gone for that instead. I just kind of feel like that would have been better, especially because his Power Herb is gone. Fuck, I don't know. Um, uh, we see the third move on the Smeargle. I don't think we ever saw the fourth move. I'm kind of assuming it's Spore. But because my Buffalon is still alive, slash was still alive at any point in time that he had Smeargle, he probably opted not to go for it. I don't know if we really ever saw the fourth move, to be honest. But take him out with a head charge, and then this is just Buffalon cleaning up, honestly. Uh, I think he... Oh, yeah, he finally goes for it right here. I was joking that I thought he was going to have both Sky Attack and acrobatics but look at how much that does in defeatist if he was going for that before i don't know how that would have panned out i don't really think i had anything to take on that thing so uh probably an air and judgment on his behalf i really couldn't tell you what did i have to take that i had my rotom and that was it so i had rotom and buffalo rotom had taken shit from an archaeops okay the best thing i probably could have done there was gone no especially if he had sport no i would have been fucked so I don't know why he wasn't doing that, but uh, should have been his game, but for whatever reason, it's mine. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that was an RU match. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, you are more than welcome to leave a like rating. Comment and subscribe and do your thing. And I think that's it for today. Spyro will be later tonight. TCGO tomorrow. 
Uh, Spyro, as much as I would like to upload it more, I would like to have time to work on other projects, so it's just going to be freaking two days a week. What more do you want from me? I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's it, and I will see you guys tomorrow, Wednesday, whenever I upload a video next. I don't know. I'm done. I'm done. Bye.